Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a system that is partially constrained. On the left side of the system, it's attached to a block. It can swivel this way, but it cannot move either up or down, left or right. This member here is attached to this member. This member can actually move to the right and push this block to the right, so therefore there is a force pushing to the left. I have a force trying to drive the members down. We have a force here to the left. We have two reactionary forces. We have one at A and one at B. Of course, at A we have both one in the X direction and the Y direction. The one at B, we only have one in the Y direction only. So this would be B sub Y if you want to call that. Okay, but since B sub Y is pointing perpendicular to the change in the direction, the X here, that means the angle between the two is 90 degrees, so that, that way we can simply ignore B sub Y, and we can ignore A sub Y and A sub X because the, this point right here does not move at all. So there's no virtual work done. So what we're going to do first is we're going to define the initial distance from here to where the force is acting initially. We're then going to define the change in the distance dy. We're also going to define the distance x from here to here, and then the distance dx. So based upon the angle relative to the vertical, and we assume that this is going to be the same on both sides, we can say that y here is equal to the length of this member times the cosine of this angle because it's adjacent to the angle. So we can define y sub naught as being equal to the length of the member times the cosine of the angle theta. We can also define x here. Uh, well, that would be L times the, well, if you put the X over here, that would be opposite of the angle. So this would be L times the sine of theta, but we have to multiply times 2 because there's two members there. So that means that X sub naught is equal to twice the length of each member times the sine of the angle theta. Now we can find the change in y and the change in x in terms of the change in the angle theta. So it's going to swivel down through a small angle d theta, which means that dy d theta can be equal to, can be found by taking the derivative of this. That would be, well, the derivative of cosine is the negative sign, so minus L times the sine of theta. And then we bring this d theta over here. We can simply write that dy is equal to minus L sine theta d theta if we take the differential of the angle. We can do the same with the change in x. dx can be defined as being the derivative of this, which would be 2L times the cosine of theta d theta. So now we have defined the change in y and the change in x in terms of the change in the angle. We're now going to try to find r in terms of how much the angle changes and the force F applied at the top. So for that we're going to use virtual work. We can say that the virtual work done is equal to the sum of all the forces from i equals 1 to n. In this case there's only two forces at play. B doesn't do any virtual work, neither does A sub X and A sub Y, only R and F do virtual work. So it's going to be the product of the forces multiplied times the DU's. Of course, it's a dot product, so we do have to take into account the, um, the directions of those. And we know that that is going to be equal to zero because the, the structure here is in equilibrium and now we're allowing it to do a small amount of virtual work. Of course, virtual work means we have an imaginary displacement, there's really no real displacement and we're going to calculate the work done by doing so. So this is going to be equal to the force F, the magnitude of that force, times the magnitude of the displacement dy, times the cosine of the angle between the two. But since they're both pointing in the same direction, that will be the cosine of zero degrees. Plus the force here, R, that's the magnitude of the force, times the magnitude of the displacement, dx, times the cosine of the angle between the two. Now R is acting to the left, dx is to the right, which means the angle is 180 degrees. And that should add up to zero. All right, now let's go ahead and simplify this. 
So this is equal to f times dy times the cosine of 0, which is 1. And then minus, because the cosine of 180 degree is minus 1. So let me get rid of these equal signs here. So we have f dy minus r dx times the negative 1, which I placed there, equals 0. Now keep in mind that f and r are the magnitudes of f and r, and dy and dx are the magnitudes of dx and dy because we've taken care of the direction of the virtual displacement by taking the cosine of the angle between them. All right, now let's plug in what dy and dx are equal to. So here we have f times dy, and we need to know the magnitude of dy, which is L sine of theta d theta minus r times dx, the magnitude of dx, which is times 2L, the cosine of theta d theta, and that should equal 0. Now notice, since it's said equal to 0, we can factor out an L. We can factor out the d theta, so we divide both sides by L. We can divide both sides by d theta, and now we're left with f times the sine of theta is equal to, oh, no, it's minus, minus uh, 2r times the cosine of theta is equal to 0. So now I can move the 2r cosine of theta to one side, have this on the other side, so we have 2r cosine of theta is equal to f times the sine of theta, and now we divide both sides by 2 and both sides by the cosine of theta, we can write that r is equal to half of f times the tangent of theta, because the sine divided by cosine, of course, is the tangent. And so now we have found the magnitude of r in terms of f and the angle theta. So at the moment that we're in this particular position, and the force f is applied, r will be equal to half of f times the tangent of theta. And that's how it's done with virtual work. I'm hoping you're beginning to like this method because it turns out as the structures become more complicated, it actually becomes a fairly easy, straightforward way of solving for the forces on the members of a structure like that. And that's how it's done.